Summer Shines, we've done over 5,000 miles of the Great American Loop. Almost 6,000 miles. And we have a few tips and tricks we would like to share. And this is my, the Admiral's, top five must-have items for the Loop. Things I would not do the Loop, or really boat, any sort of cruising without. Things that make your cruising easier. Yes, yes. and better. better. Number one must have, because water is life, is a Berkey water filter. Now, people who don't have boats probably are like, how do you get your water, right? So we get our water from a hose that comes off the dock. And as you're moving from place to place, there's no telling what your water quality is, right? And then that, that water goes into your boat, into your tank. There's no telling what's in our tank because you can't really see it or easily clean it. And then we have a filter in our kitchen sink that filters it, but the best filter is the Berkey water filter. And you simply dump water in the top, doesn't take any power, filters out all the fun. I love that aspect, doesn't take any power. Yeah. It and drips, gravity fed. We have seen people try to carry big tubs of, or things of, of bottled water and water in plastic. plastic bottles. And horrible for the ocean, it's horrible for your body. For your back. Yes, it's just logistically very difficult on the loop. So Stop the water bottles. Get a Berkey. Get a Berkey. Bill. You'll save money, actually. You save a lot of money. The amount you spend on the water yeah. bottles and back therapy and everything. It's, yeah. It is the absolute best solution for water on a boat. So that's number one. We've already converted one boat. Oh, we've converted a couple boats. Number two, must have. Absolutely must have. Marriage savers. Okay, so these little guys, go get yours. See if we can. As Mark is getting his marriage savers. These little guys enable us to talk to each other from afar. Now, we tried to hack it using our air, our earbud, earbud things, earphones from our, our cell phone. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Best money ever spent. So we, and we all four wear one of these. And everybody in your crew needs one. If you have children who are on the boat with you, um, everybody needs one. And it's part of the whole experience. What our kids have said while these things are on is absolutely hilarious. And it really incorporates them into being part of the crew. So these things are expensive, but they are the best money. And you can sell them when you're done. Everybody's always wanting them. Yes. Another great thing about them, I've had to go down in the engine room and check transmission, check packing and stuff like that. So then it can be up on the flybridge or anywhere else on the boat Talking and I can to. literally be working in the engine room. And it's also, Cinda needs to get a line off the back of the boat, just so I know. Safety wise. She's telling me step by step, okay, I'm on the platform. Don't move, don't do anything with the throttles. They're just great. Yeah, so this is how we dock, and we use our low, calm voices, and we can easily communicate, and I can tell Mark what needs to happen, because I'm his eyes on the back of the boat if we're backing in. These things are amazing. And pro tip, when you're done, um, every time you're done doing anything, don't turn, I mean, you can turn them off, but we found that opening the, the hatch, the hatch for the battery, um, the battery's not in right now, uh, is easier and better. Always get an extra battery just in case your battery's dying and you need them. As soon as you're done with them, put them in the docking station, charge them because you're always ready to go. The last thing you want to do is get ready to dock and you got dead. Yeah. Headphones. And we found out the hard way that they float and they will survive floating in a lock for 20 minutes before you're able to rescue them. So yep. um, they don't advertise that, so I don't know if that's an actual feature, but Rex got mad. And, and we're not paid by these like people that. or anything, but no. we have loved the whoever, oh, what brand is that? Ear Tech. Ear Tech. And, and they stay, like our kids have tiny heads and they stay on their heads, so just fine. Just don't throw a fit yep. in a lock and then it falls in. So. Okay, number three. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> number three must have a giant cordless rechargeable spotlight. That one's not that giant. Well, I like this size. Mark would have an underwater one or a bigger one. This size is easy for me to have and it is essential for checking lines at night, checking anchors. I have used this so many times, um, getting in tight spots. <laughs> okay, so if you watched our April update, you will have heard us refer to the Bermuda Triangle that we are in and our technical difficulties we've been having. And one of the, the victims of the Bermuda Triangle was the second half of this video. So we're reshooting the second half of the video, picking up where we left off with your favorite spotlight. Yes, okay. top top five things that you must have. This is number three of your top five. Yes, number three, this spotlight. You need a high power, handheld, rechargeable flashlight that you can shine on shores and go long distance. This For is things that go bump in the night. Now, 
Sea Shine has a spotlight on the outside, which Cinda has decided looks like Wally. <laughs> I just now realized that for a year in, and I just now noticed. But when that. things go bump in the night, or you need to look at something quickly, rather than going on over to the panel, flipping searchlight, turning it on there, and using the little toggle, it's easier just to grab one of these things. Stick your head out the door and so, like shine it at whatever. I'm looking at anchor lines. I'm looking at things on the shore. I'm using it to look in holds. It's just you just get this. Okay, so that's number three. Okay. Moving on to number four of my top five is boat shoes. Boat shoes. Okay. Okay. So learn from my mistakes. I thought oh, I just have regular flip flops. I'm good. I don't need like actual boat shoes because I'm gonna be barefoot. Let me just tell you. I had an incident when we first started with the dewy deck and <laughs> a dewy deck you mean water on a deck yes a dewy deck I never walk outside without my boat specific boat the boat shoes with a sole um, or they're flip-flops with a um, boat sole like a Sebago sole yes um, I also have a boat boot by Rocky Mm -hmm. Rocky makes Boots makes one that's specific for boating, but it's more of a galosh type thing. Amazing for rainy days and cold weather. I prefer something I can slip on um, like a flip-flop for all the rest of the of the time. But again, so pick your favorite. I'll show you the flip-flop that I have worn nonstop for a year. Um, get a pair of Boat Sebago. When you find your boat shoe that you love, make sure you have at least two pairs. Because I bought this pair of flip-flops, love them, I've worn them every day for a year until about a week ago when I was stepping off a of sea shine onto the dock and my very worn out sole of this flip-flop, um, it has lost its grip and I slipped and how I didn't fall nine feet into the shark infested water, I do not know, but I did just bang my leg up. Like They were nurse sharks, they would have just gummed you. It was not graceful. I thought I broke my leg. I have bruises all over my leg. And we're about a week later and I'm finally walking normally on it. So the, what you loved about these was this sole right yeah. there. How it has like, that catches, disperses the water. Those were good. So those were flip jack, Souls. southern tide, But they're a boat, they're boat, a boat sole. sole. And if I need a new pair, clearly. Yep. And once they're doing this, just again, Learn from my mistake and get a new pair. But I'm in the Bahamas. Well, I got some Tevas. Once they get that plastic, gets old. It gets slickered and snow. So if you find a pair you like, buy two pairs, whatever it is, of the slip-on, slip-off, and you also want a foul weather boot deck shoe as well. So that's number four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, a lot of people are going to yell at you and say, not yell at you. They're going to say, don't ever wear flip-flops on a boat. Well, you like, know what? Some... Sailors will say like flip-flops. Oh, uh, yes. I I understand that concern and I'm sure... Lace-ups. Got to have lace-ups. I'm lace -ups. sure a lace-up would be safer. I never had a problem keeping my flip-flops on or issues with my flip-flops until the sole died. So that is my personal preference. If you're concerned about your safety, get a lace-up, Sebago. Um, Sperry. Oh, cool. Helly Hansen, like full on. There's lots sailing. of great boat okay. shoes. Just uh, my point is, make sure you've got good boat shoes, yeah. um, specific. And replace them when they're yes. done. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Don't do what I did. Uh, so that brings us to the number five. five must-have items when you're living on a boat, doing the loop, cruising the world, wherever you're doing. The one thing that it's the most important, which makes me laugh, but you've got to have good bedding. I know that sounds silly, but we got really nice um, monogram bedding from Peacock Alley because that's what I have at home and that's what I love. Um, and at the end of the day, when you live on a boat, you're exhausted, at least I am. And having a super comfortable bed to crash in is essential. So whatever that is for you, whatever makes your bed super comfy and feel like home, do that. So if, you know, for us it was, High end linens. Could be grandma's quilt. <laughs> it could be grandma's quilt. Whatever. Whatever it is, just make sure you are super comfy so that you can get sleep because sleep is a necessity along with water. So, those are my top five must haves that aren't really obvious, or maybe they are. The sheets are random. <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> but come on, you love them too. 
I do, but... What else? I mean, I, I guess I could say floppy hats. That's another one. Sun protection. I wear a big there, floppy but hat. But see, that's obvious. Yeah. I just, I, I think a lot of people think that good bedding is a, it's like... You a luxury. It's a luxury and you don't put it high on the list and I think it should be because you spend a lot of your life asleep and you should have good sleep when you're doing this level of Well, you of should probably add to that a good mattress. I mean, well, it's all, I'm going to say bedding in a general. A good bed setup. Whatever makes your... Sleep is a must. Yes. That's all I'm saying. There's right. a lot of other... I could do a part two, which would include the perfect sunscreen and floppy hats and, you know, Maybe clothes. You Maybe you will. Maybe I will. Right. I don't know. But that's my top five. Top five, five from the Admiral. And up next will be the Captain's Top Five. So right. stay tuned for that. Until, Until then, then, pick up two pieces of trash a day if you don't mind. If you live in the South, we need to pick up four and shine, shine on. on.